Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Ray Rose, Reverend Ray Rose. I want to share with you um, a dream that I had probably about two to three weeks ago. I've been trying to, um, of course, written, written it down, and uh, now I decided to do a video, amen, and uh, about it. And I think that it applies to the times that we live, live in there, and I think that it's a warning um, not only um, to the church, but to the um, the whole world, okay? And um, I'm going to title this the, uh, the Dream of the Seven Trees and Seven Men because that's what it was. In this particular dream, I dreamt about seven trees and seven men. The seven trees were planted by the banks of a river, okay? And the water of the river surrounded the bottom of the tree to the point where in the roots of the tree was deep into the river and deep into the bottom of the river, okay? Um, the river itself flowed out of a mountain, out of the mouth of a mountain. And the mountain um, was huge and um, it was full of smoke, um, um, and you really couldn't see all of it and everything like that, but you knew that there was someone um, that dwelt in the mountain that um, um, had, I want to say, had planted the trees, the seven trees, and you knew this person um, uh, I'm going to say God. Let's say God, okay? We knew that he dwelt in the mountain and he spoke out of the mountain and he also uh, caused the the river to flow um, and watered the seven trees. Now, I want to say right off from the back that this river uh, was wide to the point where it filled the openness of the mountain mouth okay and also that it uh it flows um as far as the eyes could see so no i mean the, you, the river just went all the way down to the point when you couldn't see it anymore okay now in the dream the seven men have been given a responsibility to uh um to to watch to take care of the seven trees each man had a tree, and their responsibility was to water the tree, even though it was already in water, all right, and to speak to the trees, okay, and to groom the tree, and to dig around it, okay, to dig around the tree and to make sure the tree was continue to be healthy, the trees continue to be healthy. The trees themselves were full of green leaves, you know. There was both small trees and large trees, you know. But each man had a responsibility to do to take care of the tree, their particular tree, you know. Um, and based on what I think I saw in the dream or what I felt like, that their responsibility was to love the tree. And all this had been ordained and they had been chosen to do this by he uh, that dwelt in the mountain, okay? Now, in the dream, um, besides the seven men, okay, uh, before I get to that, let me tell you, the seven men was doing what they were supposed to do. They was grooming the tree. They was doing everything that they had been ordained or called or chosen to do. And he was doing it, you know, and the tree was flourishing. I mean, you could see that all the green leaves and the branches and everything was going great and everything. And then I saw another man that I couldn't see his face, but I could hear his voice and I could see his form. And he spoke to the seven men and he warned the seven men to continue to water the tree, to do the things that they were supposed to do. Um, to groom the tree, to speak to the tree. He warned them to do those things, okay? He came forth and he went to the men and the men acknowledged him and he warned them and the men went back to doing those things that they were supposed to do with the trees, okay? But then the next part of the dream, 
I saw the seven men walk away from the seven trees, each man his own tree. And then in the dream, I saw the seven men begin to argue with each other. They begin to desire uh, the things of the world more so than taking care of the taking care of their particular tree. They begin to um, permit or uh, commit um, all kinds of craziness acts. I saw somebody commit adultery. Or they were committing fornication. They was into um, fame and fortune. They was into money and everything and all these different things. I even saw two men that was ready to kill each other because one had slept with the other one's wife and it was just total chaos, you know? And this took place, they walked away from each man his tree. And when they walked away from each man their their particular tree, it, they was distracted enough to the point where the seven trees began to die off. They began to uh, die off by, with the leaves first. The leaves fell off, okay? Then the man that I told you about earlier that was, uh, couldn't see his face but saw his form, again came and spoke to the seven men and said to them, you need to take care of the trees. You need to speak to the trees and water it and do what that which you have been commanded to do. And the seven men um, stopped in their tracks or whatever they was doing, the chaos of the world, whatever was they were doing that was evil and all this kind of stuff, and went back to each man his tree and began to nurse the trees, the trees back to health. But in the process of doing that, still there had been some leaves that couldn't, uh, they couldn't get back. So they watered the trees and they did what they did all those things again, you know. And once the they, the, the trees was to a certain point where they felt like they, it was healthy, they walked away from the trees again. They walked away again and began the same thing over and again. They began to bitter among each other. They began to say who was great and who was less and began to be in a prideful state. They began again with the adultery and, and sin and fornication. They began to get political and stuff like that. Want to want to be run for office, want to do all of these different things. And again, they took their focus off the trees and the trees began to die again. The trees began to die again, y'all. And in my heart, I began to to be to 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 to, to grieve because I saw the destruction that was going on. But I saw the trees dying, and I wept inside of myself. You know, I was a bystander. I could see, but I couldn't t say anything to them. And I was appalled that they didn't know that what was happening with the tree. So they did this again and again the man came forth again and spoke to them and said to them, this, much, this time in a much sterner voice, you must take care of the trees. You must water the trees and speak to the trees and groom the trees and dig around the trees. And you got to do those things that you have been given responsibility to do and everything. And the seven men went back to each man his tree and begin to do those things they were doing before. And the trees got better, but not as better as it was before. But they got better. And for the and and again for the last time <sighs> the men stepped away. And I looked at them in a dream and I couldn't believe it. I said, why are they leaving this again? The men stepped away from the, the seven trees, each man his own tree, and they began to argue among themselves. They began to care more about their own life than the responsibility they have been given. They began to care more about riches and money and all this kind of stuff than, than the trees that they had been given responsibility. They began to argue and to fight and to want to destroy one another and create war and create chaos and all these different things and this time I looked at the trees 
and they were completely dead in a sense where they was no longer rooted into the ground by the river and the river had completely dried up. The trees had was no longer rooted. There was no more leaves on it. And I wept because there was no more leaves on the tree and there was no there, there was no longer planted in the by the in the river bank. In fact, the trees, the southern trees turned into thousands upon thousands upon thousands of trees and they was all laying inside of the river bank that had no water. And the trees that I saw, there was thousands upon thousands upon thousands stretched for miles as far as the eyes could see. And I began to hear these trees begin to cry out and ask the question, why? They even asked the question, why, to the seven men, why they didn't do what they were supposed to do. They begin to ask the question, why didn't you water us? Why didn't you talk to us? Why didn't you speak to us? Why didn't you love on us? Why didn't you dig around us? Why didn't you make sure that our leaves were living? They begin to say this. They begin to say this to the seven men. And the trees was in a place like they were weeping, but they wasn't weeping, like a place like they were sad. But they wasn't sad for themselves. They were sad for the seven men. And it was sad for what was about to take place in the earth. And then I saw one man in particular try to jump into the, the river that had no water and try to make things right. But it was already too late. The damage had been done. The trees had been uprooted. They were dead, but yet still alive. And then I saw the mountain begin to shake, and he that was in the mountain began to speak. But I couldn't understand what he was saying. But he was angry at the seven men because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. They didn't, they didn't say and do the things that they had been given and chosen and appointed for such a time as this to do. And he was angry at them, and he was bringing forth judgment. And I saw the whole earth begin to shake and everything, but the trees that was in the riverbank was safe. And nothing happened to the, the trees that was in the riverbank because they were safe. But all around the world, there was earthquakes and there was storms and there was lightning and there was a voice that was crying out in, in the mountain. And then in, in the, in the men became extremely fearful because they knew that he that was in the mountain was upset and angry. And they knew that judgment was coming and they couldn't stop it. And in the dream I saw this hand, this hand that came out of the mouth of the, the river, the mouth of the mountain. And it, 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 when it came out, it filled the whole width of the mountain and the width of the river bank. And what it did is caused the, the trees to begin to flow down river, but it had no water because the water was dried up. It caused the trees to continue to move away from the destruction and away from everything that was going on as the, in, in, in everything. It was and it is if the, it took the trees and put it in his hand and was moving the trees, it caused the trees to move down the river. Thousands upon millions and millions upon millions of trees as the trees begin to cry out to the southern men and to the rest of the world, why? Why have you done this? Because they knew that judgment was coming and it was nothing that they could no longer do about it. They knew that judgment was being passed from he that dwelt in the mountain and they began to flow down the river and asking the question, why? Thousands and thousands speaking the same thing. And the men that was left was fearful and they had no answers to the, to the voice that came from the tree. They had no answer to the he that dwelt in the, in the mountain that ham came from the mountains and everything. But now they knew that judgment had come. And I wept, y'all. I woke up in tears. I woke up in tears because I saw what was about to take place. I woke up in tears because I began to weep not only for the seven men, but those that the seven men affected that was going to be destroyed because they also didn't do what they were responsible for doing. You know, only thing that when it really comes down to it, that we should have gotten to a place 
that we love the trees. But because he that dwelt in the mountain and made the trees. And I wept. And I weep now, you know, for you and for me and for those that's in leadership. God is holding us accountable. But yes, you know, he's calling for us now, y'all, to to repent of every single thing that we've done. And he's calling for us to take seriously the things of him. He's calling for us to be for real about how we serve him and how we worship him. I'm pleading to my brothers and my sister. I don't care what race that you are, but if you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, it's time now to cry loud and spare not. I'm, I'm pleading to the bishops and the apostles and the teachers and the pastors. I'm pleading to the missionaries. I'm pleading to the, the singers and everything. Show them Jesus. Show the world Jesus. Show them the, the love of God and everything. You know, repent now. And seek after the things of God for this time that we live in now. My name is Reverend Ray. I pray the love of God upon every single last one of you. I pray that God will bless you and you're coming in and you're going out. I pray that he will begin to heal you wherever you are. And whatever that you're going through. I pray that he will look upon you. And smile with favor. I pray that he will keep you safe in this crazy world that we live in. A world that's, that has decided that hate is better than love. I will preach love, y'all. I will preach unity no matter what. Until the day that I leave this world, I will do those things. Because that's what God has mandated for me to do and you to do to also. That we will come together as human, as human, as being and stuff like that. They have been created and wonderfully made and begin to put aside our differences and, and begin to put aside, put aside all these things and know that we serve a mighty God, a God that love us, you know. And with him, with him, y'all, we're one and that he loves us and he wants us to live and not die. He wants us to open up dialogue and talk to each other and work out our differences and everything. But our enemy wants us to be destroyed. Our enemy wants us to be filled with hate. And he, our enemy don't want us to talk about any of those things. Our enemy doesn't want us to pray and to fast and to seek out the God and everything. He doesn't want us to do those things. But he wants us to be destroyed. He wants us to be confused. He wants us to be lost. And he wants us to be all the things. But God is speaking to you today. He's speaking to you, the prophets also, to stand, to speak the oracles and the mysteries of his will and his desires that he has for you, that you will live. To tell somebody, some the young as well as the old, wherever they be, that you that God cares for them, and that they have value, no matter who they are, black, white, whatever, you have value, because God did not make any mistakes when He created you. He did not make any mistakes when He breathed into you. You became a living soul. When you was yet in your mother's womb, he knew you. He knew your ups and your downs. He knew your tears and your frowns. He knew everything that was to know about you. And Jesus is standing there with his arms stretched wide open just for you today. Just for you today. That you will believe in your heart. And confess with your mouth. That's it. That's it, y'all. That's it. I'm done. I love you. I love you. My brothers and my sisters, and I want you to live. I want you to survive. I want your children to survive. I want you to survive tomorrow, you know. I want you to do things that's, that you have not even thought of doing before. Because I believe that that's what God wants you to do. You have a voice. And I love you. <sighs> Again, God bless you. I love you.